endeavor. So we opened up a bookstore and we needed assistance. And so when I presented the idea to Ra'at, whom we knew for a period of time because she used to come to the bookstore, uh, we then found out where we can establish some kind of reciprocity or something that could be mutually beneficial for her and for us. Were you surprised when you, here you are in the bookstore and the owner walks over to you and says, hey, I'm looking for a second wife, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Were you surprised? That's exactly how it happened, but yes, yes I was. It's not something that you're exposed to. Right, that's right. Initially, like we don't learn this in school. Right. And so what was your first impression, your first thought when the you first, it? The first thought I actually had was, I was just like, um, does she know? Right. <laughs> that was my first, <laughs> my first thought, it was right. natural. What's going on guys? It's your girl Angie Snatch coming at you with another episode of An Unbiased Truth, Decoding the Brother Polite Trial. And today we're gonna talk about Raat, AKA, Jessica Casey, who is Polite's second wife, a continuation of the broken home pattern and whom I believe was groomed by Brother Polite. But let's go ahead and get into it, starting with the history of Raet. Raet was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1989. Her mother is from Dominica and her father is from Haiti, hence the accent. She never knew her father. And she talks about witnessing a tumultuous relationship between her mother and stepdad. Now, Raet was raised in the Prospect Gardens part of Brooklyn. It's near Little Haiti, uh, near Little Caribbean. When her mom began going to the All About Egypt bookstore, the all About Egypt bookstore at the time was owned by Malachi Z. York, but being managed by Brother Polite. So there is where she and her mother were introduced to Malachi C. Z. York and the whole Nuwapian indoctrination. Fun fact, Jessica Casey went to George Wingate High School. And guess who else went to George Wingate High School? Graduating a little earlier, of course, is Miss Amionette. So from George Wingate High School, she would go to the All About Egypt bookstore that was managed by Polite and his wife, Amionette, who took a liking to write at. Now, let's do a little bit of math. What I want to do for you guys, I'm going to play the rest of that clip that you guys just saw um, from It Was the Fallen State. If you want to see the full interview, I'm going to put it in the um, description bar box. It is from the Falling State podcast, but I'm going to play the rest of that interview because we're going to do a little bit of math because when I say being groomed. When we talk about Renente, it's like one of those up in the air things. But with this, we can use simple math to get to the bottom of this. Let me play the rest of this video and then we'll get into our addition and subtraction. Your first impression, your first thought when the you first, it. The first thought I actually had was, I was just like, um, does she know? Right. <laughs> that was my first, my first thought. It was right. natural because That's right. um, when I started coming, I was really young. So I actually looked How old at, were you at the time? Um, I was like 17. Oh, okay. Six, I was 16, 17. My mother used to go to the bookstore. And so I seen them two together and I was just like really happy for them. She was um, pregnant and she looked gorgeous. Like she just was just dark African looking queen right. with her afro, you know, yeah. and I was just like, wow, you know. And then so. what happened in your mind? You're like, this is a good one to be with? Well, actually, yes, because she, like they mentioned, she has been coming around to the bookstore for years before right. we even um, uh, consider her as a co-wife. So uh, it's not like, you know, a random person off the street. Like I've actually seen her, I've seen her family. For me, I thought more of the future. And as they mentioned, I was conceiving at the time. So I know I didn't have both parents. Okay, let, let me pause right there. You hear Aminet saying she was conceiving at the time, meaning that she was pregnant at the time when they approached um, Ra'at with this proposition. Just to put everything in context, this year, 
Aminette posted a happy birthday to her oldest daughter, Ma'at. It says, happy 15th solar return, Ma'at. So Ma'at is 15 years old this year. In this video, Aminette is saying that she was pregnant at the time when they approached Ra'at with this proposition. Let me finish. There are things that I was... Uh... I was lacking right. growing up, you, and I wanted more. No, oh, okay. I wanted more for my child. We right. have. Now, I'm gonna read this excerpt. This is from Renente's book. In my father's house, there are many mansions. This book came out in 2010. I want you guys to keep that in mind. This book came out in 2010. So let me read. This is where she's talking about how they're starting their business now. True Light was, of course, the one who started it, getting the idea from our master teacher, Dr. Malachi Kobina York, who we call Baba, our spiritual father and guide. He speaks 19 languages, wrote over 400 plus books, owned bookstores and property, and built us a land called Tamare. I hope I ain't put too much sauce on that tamare. <laughs> Egypt of the West. He has greatly influenced the minds of many people for the better. And it is because of him that we do what we do. True Light created a newspaper and Aminette did the design and layout for all, and all four of us wrote most of the articles in it. It became known as the Golden Ark Global Foundations publication and the four of us and sometimes even the children went on the trains. Now I did look this up. Golden Ark Global Foundations was founded in 2006 in Brooklyn, New York. It is registered to Juliet Smalls, aka Amunet's mother's old home. Um, it is a registered nonprofit in New York City. However, it is not a federally recognized nonprofit. I'm going to read this second part. Let me go down right here. I can be proud and I can honestly say that True Light is the first man that I have personally met who I can call a true man and a true father. He is giving, intelligent, patient, creative, talented, handsome, strong, hardworking, and has an uplifting spirit. He is very forgiving and possesses great compassion, even for those who have wronged him. To me, he is more than just a mortal. He is a deity. That's powerful. He is a deity, and especially when we discuss what is going on right now and what we have seen with many of powerful people without... um pointing fingers or using names when they go and transcend into this place where they consider themselves deities or gods, that's when they begin to pray in the youth and that the youth and that it becomes an honor for you to be chosen by this person, right? And every day he is teaching others to be the same. For this, he deserves all of the love all of the respect, love, and support that I can give him. Now, that goes to show that part of the foundation that Ra'at comes from is the Malachi Z. York indoctrination, the doctrine of the Nuapians through this bookstore, guys. I hate to say it, this bookstore. Everything happens through this bookstore. Why? Because knowledge is power. When you open someone's mind up, it is a very um, powerful place for you to be that you have to be very careful not to abuse that power because knowledge is profit and knowledge is power. If I give you knowledge, why do your children adore you? Because you give them those knowledge. They see you as the end all be all because you provide them with that knowledge. But this is why I wanted to get into the other part of the book where she states her age. This book was written in 2010. I am 21 years old and I do not know my biological father. 
Yes, I know his name and I have two memories of him, but that is as far as it goes. What I want to say on is that part that says, I am 21 years old. This book was written in 2010. Now, let's do a little bit of math. Correct. Am, am I off? Let me know. Are you keeping up? It will make Ra'at born in 1989. Let's do that again. In this video, should I play it again? Let me go back. In this video, they say that they proposition Ra'at with this polygamous relationship while Juliet was pregnant. I'm about to bring it home and bring it full circle. Trust me, guys. Did you miss me? I actually had a cold. You know, my little one got sick. And then once the little one gets sick, it's the domino effect. But let's go back to this video. Let me add it back to the stream. That was, I was just like, um, does she know? Right. <laughs> that was my first, <laughs> my first thought. It was right. natural because That's right. um, when I started coming, I was really young. So I actually was. How old were you at the time? Um, I was like 17. Oh, okay. Six, I was 16, 17. My mother used to go to the bookstore. And so I seen them two together and I was just like, really happy for them. She was um, pregnant and she looked gorgeous. Like she just was this dark African looking queen <laughs> right. with her Afro, you know? Yeah. And I was just like, wow, you know? And then so. what happened in your mind? You're like, this is a good one to be with? Well, actually, yes, because she, like they mentioned, she has been coming around to the bookstore for years before right. we even um, uh, consider her as a co-wife. So, uh, it's not like, you know, a random person off the street. Like, I've actually seen her. I've seen her family. For me, I thought more of the future. And as they mentioned, I was conceiving at the time. So I know I didn't have... Okay, there you have it. She was conceiving at the time. She was pregnant at the time. Let's do a little more math. So we know in 2010, Ra'at is 21 years old, according to what... She says in Renentet's book, this year, Amunet um, posts a happy birthday post to Ma'at saying happy 15th solar return. Happy 15th solar return. That means that Ma'at is turning 15 this year. Now, 15, 2021 minus 15 is 2006 but they are saying in this video that she was approached when she was pregnant so that brings us to 2005 you're pregnant for nine months uh, my eye is born in august so this is 2005 at most early 2006 but i have my calculations for 2005 so let's do the math we know that from Ra'at was 16 years old when she was approached by Amunet and Polite for this indecent proposal. It actually really reminds me of the movie Indecent Proposal. And while we often think about um, Renente, I do think that Amunet is one of those grooming cases that is staring us all right in the face. I mean, here she is, proposition. Yes, she's in her 30s now, but proposition at 16 years old, 
going through a lot of daddy issues, as all of them have, this bookstore has become the catalyst for everything. And I hate to say it, but a lot of it does trickle down from the teachings of Malachi Z. York. And I could believe in a situation like this that a woman like Ra'at would not even consider anything that's going on with polite out of the ordinary because in her mind, in her own words, she sees him as a deity. So I just believe that as we're looking at the polite case, this has been going on for quite some time. What has happened is that karma in the modern age has um, caught up to him. That layer of secrecy that he uh, was afforded in that community from the bookstores to now, to today, um, really made him feel like he could move without any consequences, that he could use his knowledge as power over people. And we see that he continues to do that. But in covering Ra'at, I think that he and her have a bond that at this point is unbreakable because not only is he her husband, he is like her father. He is all she knows. He is who bought her the teachings of Malachi Z. York. You guys let me know. What do you think about this situation? It's your girl, Angie Snatch.